Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number six. Day 3006, 3 represents the 3rd edition, 3 designates 3rd edition, 3rd edition, day 6, and we are on page number 136. Please turn to it, page 136. On that page you will see some problems. We are going to do those problems together, you and I, that is. The very first problem says, 4 plus 6.6. Divide by 2. Okay. Leave the calculator alone, leave the calculator alone, and for and whatever you do, do not try to replicate the step that they show you in the book. They want you to use the calculator and then and punch in so many keys there to get the answer. It's very simple, it's very straightforward. And that is not to suggest that I'm saying that you are not allowed to use the calculator at all during the exam. There are sometimes occasions, there are sometimes occasions uh, where a calculator is called for. Uh, if it is too cumbersome, if it is too tedious, if it is too time consuming, of course you're going to use a calculator. But not something as simple as what we are about to do right now. The four problems that they give you in the book, they're too simple. Okay, let's, let's get going. Enough of the talk. So, let's divide this by two. How many twos does six have? Six has three twos. Move the decimal place up. How many, three, how many, six, how many twos does seven have? Seven also has three twos. Three twos are six. After we take away 6 from the 7, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? That 1 goes, it joins the 3 and becomes a 13. And 13 has 6, 6, 13 has 6, 2. 6, 2 is a 12. After we take away 12 from the 13, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? That 1 is going to go and join its neighbor. That 1 is going to go and join its neighbor. It goes and joins a 0 and becomes 10. And 10, we know, has 5 2's. That's it. Since we divide the top by 2, we must divide the bottom by 2. We are done. 4 plus 3.365 is simply 7.365. Let's do the next one, number 2. Number 2 says the negative of, don't forget the negative sign in front, negative of 8.4 plus 9.3 divided by 70. Let's see what we can do. Divided by 70. Let's first add up the top part. Don't forget the negative front. 0.4 and 0.3 is going to be 0.7. And 8 plus 9, 8 plus 8 is 16, so it's going to be 17. It's 17.7 divided by 70. 17.7 divided by 70. Let's do it here. 17.7 divided by 70. Don't worry about the negative sign right now. Divided by 70. The first thing I would like to do, I don't know about you, but first thing that I like to do is to get rid of the decimal point. I find them very annoying. How can we get rid of this decimal here on the top? Well, it's very simple. Take the quantity and divide the top and bottom by 10. Since we're dividing both top and bottom by the same number, we're not changing its value. Now we have 177, 177 over 70 times 10 is 700. Okay, let's see what we can do. 70 times 70 times 10 is 700. Now let's figure out this value, what that is. For the time being, we're not going to worry about 700. We're just going to divide 177 by 7. 177 by 7. 17 has two sevens. Two sevens are 14. It will go faster if I can write properly. After we take away 14 from the 17, we have a remainder of 3. That 3 goes and joins the 7 and becomes a 37. 37 has 5 7. 5 7 is a 35. We have a remainder of 2. Introduce the decimal point and it becomes a 20. And 20, how many 7s does 20 have? Well, at this point we're going to approximate. At this point we're going to approximate. Let's pretend that 20 is approximately 21. The claim that we're making is that 20 is approximately 21. And 21 we know has, has 3 7s. We're done. In other words, in other words, what we are claiming is that 177, 177 divided by 7 is approximately, divided by 7 is approximately, not exactly, approximately, divided by 7 is approximately 
3. Why approximately? Because it's not 20. It's, it's, not, it's not 21, it's 20. Actually, in reality, it was 20. We are pretending that it's 21. Now, what we have to understand is that we don't want to, we don't want to divide this by 7. We don't want to divide this quantity by 7. We have to divide by 700. Well, if you're going to divide by 700, then you have to move the decimal place two spots, one and two. That's it, we are done. In other words, this quantity is approximately equal to, we need the room, is approximately equal to 0 0.253. And that is good enough for the exam. That is good enough for the exam. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, as far as the exam is concerned, we have done too much. As far as the exam is concerned, we have done too much. Because very rarely, most of the times, you can get away by estimating the figure by the tenth place, by the tenth place, and by the time you get the hundredth place, you have done enough, more than enough. This is to the thousandth place, to the, to the, to the nearest one thousandth, and that's plenty, that's plenty good. You don't have to do the exact calculation. Let's carry on then, number three. In number three, they are asking us to find the square root of 21 squared plus 54 squared plus 54 squared. Let's see what we can do. Let's first find out 21 squared on the side here. 21 squared. 20, 21 times 1 is 21. 1, carry 2. And 21 times 2 is 42. 42 plus 2 is 44. So that part is done. Let's figure out 54 squared. Here we're going to do one digit at a time because I don't know the table of 54. And neither do you as a matter of fact. 4 4 is a 16. 6, carry 1. 4 5 is a 20. 20 plus 1 is 21. It's done. Hold the unit digit. Now let's do the 10, 10 digits. 5 4 is a 20. 0, carry 2. Cross it out and make it 2. 5 5 is a 25 plus 2 is 27. We get 6, 1, 9, 2. We have this quantity, we have that quantity, let's add them up. 4, 4, 1. And we get a 7, a 5. This is going to be 13. It is the square root of 3,357. And that is something we are going to estimate. As far as the exam is concerned, you don't have to do the precise calculation. Very rarely, when it is open-ended question, you need a precise calculation. Most of the time, you can get away by estimation. So how can we estimate it here? How can we estimate it? Well, we can estimate it by realizing the fact, by realizing the fact that the square root of 36, the square root of 36, everybody knows is 6. If the square root of 36 is 6, then the square root of 36 times 100, the square root of 100 is 10. In other words, the square root of 3600 square root of 3600 is exactly 60. It's exactly 60. The square root of 3600 is exactly 60. This is very close to 3600. Let's try 58. Let's try 58. 8 is a 64. 4, carry 6. 8 5 is a 40 plus 6 is 46. 8 5 is a 40. 0, carry 4. 5 5. 5 5 is a 25 plus 4 is 29. And we get 4, 6, 3 and 3. Oh, what do you know? Oh, it was just a fluke, I swear to God. I was going to try 59. I was going to try 59. But 58 actually is very close. I wonder what 59 would have been. My first instinct actually was to try 59. Because I thought it was going to be close to 59. Let's try see what it is. I want to find out how far off we would have been if we had tried 59. 9 9 is a 81. 1, carry 8. 8. 9, 5 is a 45. 45 plus 8. How much is 45 plus 8? I don't know. I know 45 plus 10. That I do know. 45 plus 10 uh, would have been 55. So it's going to be 53. 53. Hold the unit digit. 5, 9 is a 45. 5, carry 4. 5, 5 is a 25 plus 4 is 29. And we get 1, 8, 4, and 3. Ah, you see? This is... This is too far off. We are, we are, this, is, this is too high. It is not approximately 59 squared. We could say that it's approximately 59 squared. We can also say it's approximately, approximately 60 squared, but we're going to be too, too far off. 
we are approaching only almost 3,500. And this is not even 33 and a half. Oh, it is about 33 and a half. This is 3,500. This is very close. So all we have to do now is to claim, is to make a claim that the square root of 3,357 is approximately 58. Approximately 58. Because you're off by only a little bit. It's 64 and 57. You're not off a lot. Approximately 58 is good enough. So we're taking the exam. We can answer choice that comes closest to 58. And that's it. Are we underestimating or overestimating? That's the part you have to understand. Is this an overestimation or underestimation? You see, 58, 58 squared, 58 squared is exactly 3364. 3364. We don't have 3364. We don't have 3364. We only have 57. So we are overestimating it. It's going to be slightly under 58. The answer is going to be slightly under 58. Just slightly. Do you understand? And as I'm looking at the book, it tells me it's 57.94. Well, if something is 57.94 and you make a claim that is approximately 58, that's good enough. That's good enough. Let's do number four. Number four is the silliest of all among the four that they give you. Number four is the silliest of all. And if I look at, if you look at their so-called explanation with the calculator, my God, this is insanity. All they're asking here, all they're asking here is to find out the cube of negative 15 Neg uh, cube of negative 15. Well, we know 15 squared is 225. I hope you do know that. You have to know your you have to know your square up to 20. If you multiply that by one more time 15, we're going to multiply it by 15 and see what we get. 15 fives are 75. 5 carry 7. 15 to the 30. 30 plus 7 is 37. 7 carry 3. 15 to the 30. 30 plus 3 is 33. There you go. That's it. We're done. Only thing that we have to keep in mind is that the negative is raised to an odd power. So the negative times negative is positive and then positive times negative becomes negative again. I don't know why I'm explaining all this thing. This is too simple. The answer is negative of 3,375. Okay? Don't forget that negative. That's the most important part. Let's do the next problem. The next problem actually appears on the same page, number, number 5. And that's also one of their favorite kind of question where they ask you to convert from one unit to the next, uh, to, to, to the other unit. Usually from metric system to the imperial system or from imperial system to metric system. Imperial system being the feet and the yard and the, and the inches and so forth. Here the question is, you have to convert 6 miles per hour to feet per second. Feet per second. And before I completely forget it, before I completely forget it, if you want to get if you want to get some more practice, otherwise I'm going to forget. If I if I leave it until the end, I'm going to forget to, to share with you. There is a series of videos on my channel called Basic Math. Simply called Basic Math. That's what you have to type in. Type in Basic Math, day 141 and 142. Watch those two videos, solve those two problems with me on those two videos. In addition to this problem, you can get two extra problems to practice on. It's always a good idea to get some more practice, some extra practice. So, six miles per hour. So, we're going six miles per hour, six miles in one hour. We are, we are told we're going six miles in one hour. And do they tell you how many feet in a mile? Oh, yes, they do. They do tell you that there are 5,280 feet in a mile. So, let's use that. So we have six miles here. We want to get rid of the miles. So we want to put the miles on the bottom. And one mile is made up of 5,280 feet. The miles are going to go away. And that's going to give you six times, six times, 5,280 feet in one hour. One hour. But we know that one hour we know that one hour is made up of we know one hour is made up of 60 minutes so we're going this many feet in 60 minutes and 60 minutes is made up of another 60 seconds so it's 60 times 60 60 times 60 seconds so let's see if we're done all we have to do is simplify this thing all we have to do is simplify this quantity 
we are going, we are told that we are going six times 5,280 feet in 60 times 60 seconds. Therefore, we must go, therefore, we must go six times 5,280 over 60 times 60 feet. This is feet and this is second. There we go. We are done. Feet per second. We just have to simplify this thing. We just have to simplify this thing. Let's do it together, shall we? Let's do it together. I'm, using, I'm going to use a different color marker so we can see what the cancellation is going to be. And the beauty of the video is that unlike sitting in the classroom, unlike sitting in the classroom where it's very difficult to rewind the teacher, here you can rewind all you want and, and observe the sequence of steps. There are no right, there is no right or wrong sequence. It's just the way what come, whatever comes to my mind. It's just the way I'm going to do it. But there is no right or wrong sequence. I see a zero and a zero there. Let's divide top and bottom by. Let's divide top and bottom by, 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 by ten. The zero goes away. Let's divide top and bottom by six. So the six goes away. What else can we do? I see a six here. Okay. Five plus two is. Listen carefully. Five plus two is. 7, 7 plus 8 is, 7 plus 8 is 15. Since the sum of the digits, 5 plus 2 plus 8 is 15, since the sum of the digit of 528 is divisible by 3, that tells us that this number is divisible by 3. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. How many 3's, let's do it in a different color. How many 3's does 6 have? How many, how many, how many 3's does 6 have? And I'm going to write the 60, and let's write the 60 as 6 times 10, so keep it simple, okay? How many 3 says, 3 says 5 have rather? How many 3 says 5 have? 5, 5 has, five, how many 3 does 5 has? Not have. 5 has 1 3. After we take away 3 from the 5, we have a remainder of 2. Listen carefully as I speak, okay? After we take away 3 from the 5, we have a remainder of 2. 2 goes and joins the other 2, becomes 22. 22 has 7 3. 7 3 is at 21. After we take away 21 from 22, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins 18. 18 has 6 3. It's 1. Since we divide the top by 3, we must divide the bottom by 3. Oh, they are both even numbers. Well, actually, they were even numbers, obviously, to begin with. I should have done 2 first, but anyway. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. How many 2's does 1 have? 1 has no 2. 1 goes and joins the 17. 17 has 8 2. 8 2's are 16. After we take away 16 from the 17, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins the 16 and becomes... 1 goes and joins the 6 and becomes 16. And 16 has 8 2's eight again. Since we divide the top by 2, we must divide the bottom by 2. That's it. We are done. The work is done. The work is done, That's what, which is exactly why we left the 10 by itself. We have a 10 here, we left it alone because 10 is very easy to deal with. It's 88 divided by 10, the answer is 8.8 .8 feet per second. Turns out that a speed of 6 miles per hour translates into about 9 feet every second, 8.8 .8 feet. That was it for today. As I said, work on the other two other two videos that I told you before. Basic math, basic math, day 141, and basic math, day 142. There are similar problems. Work on your own. Pause the video and work on your own. Do you understand? Before you and then compare your work against the work that you and I do together. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.